Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Justin Michael. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, today, I'm going to do a tag by our very own uh, brand from uh, Moon Baby, uh, hashtag Tarot Collector. I don't do a lot of tags uh, simply because uh, a lot of them take a lot of preparation. And, and like, for instance, I've been trying to do the uh, major favorites for a very long time, but to go through each and every deck I have and find my major favorites <laughs> is going to be a daunting challenge. So, uh, but this one was pretty easy, and it's one that I wanted to do because I planned to make a video uh, on a deck that I just received. Uh, so I figured I could, but I wanted to do a short one. But I'm like, you know, I can do a tag uh, and then just mention what I wanted to mention in the video. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So thank you, Brand, for, uh, you know, creating this tag. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, you find this enjoyable. So he has a list of nine questions. Uh, the first one being the most expensive tarot deck. So I guess we're going to jump right into it. And I'm just going to get right down to my first deck, which is the Pythagorean Tarot. This is the most expensive uh, deck of my collection. It's created by John Opsipos, a uh, very Greek name. This is a deck that, you know, uh, I heard about it in Rachel Pollock's book, Tarot Wisdom. Uh, I was on a numerology study. It was um, something I, that I was like engaged really heavily in numerology and learning. Uh, and uh, she mentioned it in her book, and uh, a lot of times I do like to look at bibliographies uh, and go on book recommendations uh, for further learning. It's, it's something really helpful, uh, especially when you're looking for like an intermediate kind of book or like something like, like what would Rachel Pollock herself use as a reference uh, to numerology, and this was what she used. Uh, it comes with a really great book. In fact, I looked for this deck for so long and I could not find it. Um, I could only find the book, and I had the book, and I, I read it, uh, most of it, and I, I worked with it, um, and, but I didn't have the deck until recently, so now I have two books and a deck. But uh, I finally managed to buy the cards, but it was pretty expensive, and I had it shipped from the UK. So uh, I'm just gonna briefly show you what the cards look like. It's a very numerology-based deck, um, and this is something I'm gonna work with again uh, when I'm finished with my Robert in Place. Uh, book because he talks a lot about Plato and of course neo neo -Plato neo Platonism uh, is can also be called like neo Pythagoreanism so it's Plato and Pythagoras are pretty tied closely together um, but this is a really wonderful deck very very based in numerology and Greek philosophy uh, and it's one that I won it was probably one of my most coveted decks and I was able to get a copy of it. Uh, for around about $100, it was a little over 100 with the shipping and everything, but I was happy to get that. Uh, so that's my first one. Uh, the second is the least expensive deck, and that's very easy. I got this recently. It cost me $7. I have it in this bag uh, because I am treating the scent of it. it. It smelled a little like cigarette smoke, but that's okay. I got rid of the cigarette smoke, and now I just have it bathing in peppermint oil, which is really a great essential oil to use uh, I don't put the oil directly on my cards I let it sit sort of in a separate container and I just let it bathe in the scent uh, I like peppermint because it's not perfumey it's not um, too much you know it's like just like a hint of peppermint it's really good but th this is a deck that a lot of people don't like and I just happen to like it I got it for seven dollars on eBay um, and it's the Oswald Worth uh, Nothing fancy. This is an older version. I don't know if it's the original version. I don't think so. I think they had different backs. But this is an older version from U.S. Games. And, uh, of course, Oswald Wirth did not have pips in his deck. Um, you know, um, he used uh, just majors. But So let me just show you some more majors here. Here's the Sun card. Uh, it's a Marseille-style deck, but it's not technically a Tower to Marseille because it does have... Uh, you know the Hebrew letters and esoteric correspondences, but it is a fully it is a full pip deck. You know they, they did add pips to this, uh, and this is U.S. Games and it is still available. Uh, so I'm going to show you that. And uh, so the three is the third question is decks other collectors want to steal. Uh, and you know I looked at that question and I was like you know I don't think there are any decks in my collection that people would want to steal, but that that's incorrect. Uh, I finally thought of it. It's the New Choice Tower to Marseille. There are only 500 of these created. It's one of those decks. Well, first off, it was created by Ross Salerno, uh, who is a um, really nice guy, Italian artist, lives in Italy. But there are only 500 of these created. Uh, and it's one of those decks that became more popular after. You know what I mean? 
Uh, and anybody that is remotely interested in Tower de Marseille, although I know a lot of people who actually don't like Tower de Marseille, but they really want this deck. So it's probably the one deck that people would want to steal. And I just love the colors in it. The cardstock is lovely. Everybody loves the cardstock. It has this nice gilding. It's just a beautiful, beautiful deck. And it is a Tower de Marseille, like I said. It's, um, you know, it's a very sexy deck. It has a lot of beauty in it. Beautiful colors. I love like the pastel kind of bright tones. It's a it's a modern Marseille deck. I think it's it's one of my favorite decks also. Um, so let's see. So the fourth would be the strangest deck. You know, the strangest deck is a tough one for me because I have quite a few strange decks. And it depends on what you mean by strange, but this one was just the one that popped into my head. So I was like, I'm gonna tell you about this one. It's uh Taroko Giziano which is the Egyptian tarot. Uh, it's an Italian, it's, it's popular in Italy. It's not a traditional tarot. Well, it's not a traditional, it's not a Rider Waite, uh, Rider Waite Smith based deck. It's more or less uh, in the Atella, Egyptian uh, style. But the colors are really strange and it has these like greens and reds and yellows. It's very Italian looking. Uh, and this is also a very old deck that, which I believe Del Negro stole sells i don't know if del, del negro printed this but you can find it with del negro uh decks um uh in italy still but it's a different box this is more vintage version it's very thick cardstock uh, and this is definitely old what's strange about it is it has like playing card um correspondences on it which is very helpful if you're learning playing cards and you want to kind of develop you know more of a vocabulary with the playing cards um but the, some of the majors are different you know like this is a fool so the fool is the 70th card it's the last card um but um the majors are not all traditional majors that as we know in fact let me try and find some um so for instance you have the sun here okay and so the sun card is second actually so it's would be you know um i guess where um the high priestess would be or the or, or the magician uh yeah because no it would be where the magician uh it would be where the high priestess is and then third card number three is La, las plantas which has a picture of the moon but it has plants and you know that should be where empress is right and I was like, well, how does that relate to the Empress? But I thought, you know, you have the earthly kind of element from the plants, but then you have the water element from the moon. So it's like a combination of water and earth, which is very Emperor and Empress uh, energy. So maybe that's uh, how it relates. But uh, I don't know, it's a very strange deck. and But it is one that I use. I have used it. And I, do, I actually was using it yesterday. Um, just on, sometimes I just like to do it for readings and actually does give pretty good readings uh but i read it more intuitively because i'm not familiar with the archetypes uh, the few oddball archetypes you know the few majors that aren't the same you know it's missing a few from the 22 that you would find like for instance in the marseille deck um and it's added a few and i think that's atella atella did that um so uh, let's see. So deck other collectors least likely to have in their collection. Uh, it's going to be this one. This is a Ben Gross majors only. It's called Arcanasia. Ben Gross, uh, he just created the Tower re Result, uh, on, through, um, 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 what's his name? <laughs> Christ. Yves Renault. Uh, you know, he, they only printed 600 of them, but I fell in love with that deck. It's one of the most beautiful decks. It's a Tower de Marseille based in the Jean Payen, uh, type one type, uh, tradition. Um, but this one is a, a little different, actually. It's very similar to like, um, 
like maybe like Tower of War. It's it's sort of a, a modern. And this is the reason I say it's like least likely to have because there were only ten of these printed. You know, so this is like I think two of ten. Yeah, two out of ten. So. It's signed by him. It's a really beautiful deck. Uh, in the deck, he actually included um, another, a couple samples from another deck. This is this one is the major uh, Arcana Revisited, and I actually own an original painting from that deck, which I'm going to show you. I believe Mendy from the Archer. This is the backs. Mendy from the Archer and Tarot has that, um, but this is the the Hangman, which is from that series. Uh, it's really beautiful. Funny thing about this hangman is it came to me with the glass broken in the original frame. So I had to buy a whole new frame for it. Um, but I'm really happy to have that. It's beautiful. But I don't own the deck. I should because I own a painting. But uh, I do have a couple sample cards. But the deck that I liked more than that uh, as far as having the deck was uh, the Arcanasia deck. And I'm going to show you it's the title card here. This is very much like the Letar Noir, even size-wise. It's like postcard size. Uh, and let me just show you. So here we have the uh, full. But it's a very, very beautiful deck and very modern kind of Tower Noir say. I really, really like this. I'm glad I got it. And uh, I'm happy to have the painting. I may get the other deck sometime, um, if I can, if it's available. Because, like I said, there are only 10. Uh, I don't know if he's doing another print run or if he's doing a series. I just don't know. But he advertises it as one one of ten. So I don't see how he would be able to do that. But maybe he would. I don't know. Very, very beautiful deck. And there are only nine other people, as far as I know, that would have this deck. So it's uh, probably the least likely uh, for someone to have. here for now and so let's see so we have uh oldest deck so my oldest deck uh this was my second deck ever it's the uh celtic tarot by um helena peterson it's very very old school looking it has these you know classic card backs it's a non-marseille pip deck uh and it's very beautiful but like some of the cards are like imperfect they're off center and so forth but this is uh the second deck I, I ever got and uh, it's, it's the one that I have that's the oldest let me show you a core card the colors are really beautiful they're you know like kind of muted and but still colorful almost like pastel but it reminds me of like a stained glass window sort of thing it's very Celtic looking there's the Wheel of Fortune it's really cool and very different. So, let's see. So now we have the newest deck. So this is the deck I was going to make a video today about. But I figured I would just do this tag and then throw it in here so I can just mention what I was going to mention. Uh, I got the second printing of the Tower, Tower of the Seven Folds Mystery. Uh, really, really beautiful. They have an updated box. This is a um, very hard kind of compressed cardboard with a um, fabric exterior. Um, very much like the fifth edition of the Alchemical, which I have and I really like it. The only issue with that one was that, you know, the cards are very snug fitting in there, but I believe they fixed it because the cards fit much better in this. They also changed the gilding and the cardstock is thicker than what was uh, in the Alchemical. I have the original version. This is one of my first decks. So, you know, I had, I had like a handful of decks when I bought this. Uh, and it's in the tuck box. It's the first edition. Uh, it's a much glossier cardstock. Uh, I have to show you both just to show you the changes. So, um, you know, and these are the backs. But it has a very glossy kind of, um, you know, tarot kind of quality. You know what I mean? Whereas this is very matte. Um, and the mat really, really displays the color really, really well. Um, but I just want to show you. So, let me show you in comparison. Well, so this is the full here. Let me show you. So we have on the right we have the um, the new printing and then this is the original you can see the gloss on the original there's almost no shine to this one because it's completely matte and the colors are so much more vibrant 
Uh, they just show a lot better. The backs are different shades of green. This is the new, this is the old, but uh, I like having both, you know, because if I'm doing readings with it, I'm gonna use this so I can riffle shuffle it or do whatever I wanna shuffle. Not that I should riffle shuffle that much, but you know, it's it's an easier deck to work with. I'm not so uh, afraid to bang that one up. Um, this is a really interesting, so you have Hermes as the Magician. The reason it's called the Sevenfolds Mysteries is because so he's very into Neoplatonism, and if you want to learn more about that, you can watch the interview. I just uh, interviewed him recently on my channel. Um, but So he breaks the deck, much like Rachel Pollock, into three groups of seven. Uh, and the first seven, but he also talks about the three parts of the soul from Plato's Republic. You, know, you have the soul of appetite, the soul of will, and the soul of uh, reason. So the soul of appetite is like lusts, you know, it's like passions, sexual uh, drinking a lot, you know, appetite for all the bad stuff, you know. Um, and of course, it's a natural part of the soul, but you can indulge that too much. And he compares it to the uh, chariot, you know, and he says the chariot has a white horse and a dark horse. The white horse is the soul of will, which is like determination, it's noble, and so forth. And he like, you know, gallops forth. But the downside of the soul of will could be ego and like, um, you know, uh two sort of um over kind of um enthusiastic about battling and so forth whatever it is like an egotistical kind of thing and then the soul of appetite is of course indulging in the loss and the soul of reason is all about um reasoning and i think the workers in the republic they sort of strive to um fight the soul of appetite and the solution to that is temperance um, which I was just talking about in a live uh, earlier tonight. Uh, but temperance is like sort of, if you look at the temperance card uh, in this deck, you will see that um, she is pouring flames, or, you know, pouring water on appetite. You know what I mean? So that's like... So those are the themes all throughout, and um, it's just a really lovely deck. And, you know, if you read Robert's book, you will uh, start to understand what, you know, where his head was at when he created this. And it's very based on the mythology, well, the, the philosophy of Plato and um, the Neoplatonist and so forth. It's a really, really beautiful deck, though. So that is my most recent. Uh, and you should definitely get this if you're a fan of it because uh, it's really well done. Um, and I think it's well worth the purchase, to be, to be quite honest. Um, I, was, I was going to wait for his Marseille deck to be printed. The only thing is, I mean, like I said, you just have to be careful putting it in the deck. Putting it back in the box. It fits better than the other one, but I don't like that they put the cloth inside. Uh, like, I don't know. They have to modify it a little better, but they got it better than last time. So, But it is a nice box. And like I said, you could keep the book out of it, or, or you could figure out a way to kind of like break it in. Hopefully it, it loosens up a little bit or something. But um, yeah, so anyway, going on about that. But... Um, so let's see, the deck that made you want to start collecting in the first place, that is the Taramuka. So Taramuka was my second deck, uh, reason. So it was my third deck ever, but it was my second deck in a really long time, and I went into the store with Steven, uh, it's where I bought my first tarot deck, uh, it's a place called the um, um, Garden of uh, something, I, I can never remember. The Garden of the Garden of Letters, no Garland of Letters. Uh, it's this really beautiful store, and um, I was looking at tarot. So I was like, you know, I'm very interested in getting a tarot deck. I don't know because there's a thousand decks around, and uh, this is the one that um, I was drawn to. I just thought it was beautiful. Uh, but when I got this, and I got home. I was like, you know, I liked a lot of those other decks. So I was like, I might go up there again and buy another one. Stephen bought this one for me. But I ended up, of course, going back to that store and buying um, a tarot deck almost every time I went in for the next several months. Uh, and then that's, hence I became a collector. And 
yeah, it's a really beautiful deck. It's based on the art from um, Alphonse Mucha, who is uh, known from the, um, you know, um, Art Nouveau period of art history, turn of the century. It's a very optimistic kind of art. It's not the original paintings. They're, you know, they've been manipulated and changed uh, to make it tarot friendly. But uh, that's totally fine. Totally fine with that. I really, really like this deck. I, in fact, I want to leave it out because I'm going to do some readings with it. No, I'm going to work with this deck. It's very Rider Waite Smith based. Um, and so, last but not least, is my favorite deck in my collection. I'm going to name two. I'm not going to show you the whole lot of cards, but the first one I won't even have to show you is the. Um, this is the. Um, Centennial by um, Pamela Coleman Smith, you know, the, the US Games version. Uh, it's really, really pretty, and I've edged it in green uh, because it was so old and beat up and so used. It's my one of my most, I've read so many people with this, it's probably my most used deck ever. Um, but it was starting to get beat up, so I edged it in blue because the, you know, the outside was just filthy. Um, but uh, this is the borderless version. I have since gotten the regular version, but. This is my favorite deck because, A, it's a Rider Waite Smith. And so Rider Waite Smith would be like my favorite deck of all time. I just love Rider Waite Smith. But this is a variation of that. Um, and it's, this just happens to be my favorite version of it. Um, so I would say that, you know, because of the history of it and so forth, that's, that's why it's my favorite. But a second, a close second would be the Marseille version uh, is the uh, Le Terre Noir has these really beautiful backs and uh, it's just really pretty uh it's in the um it's in kind of a, a surrealist style now this deck is also special to me because it reminds me of rachel pollock i gifted her this deck after i interviewed her and she really appreciated it and we've really been friendly ever since um and she's just someone i really respect a whole lot and uh you know reminds me of her and she actually at the time when i showed her this she was doing a a writing project on Leonora Carrington, who's an impressionist, uh, not an impressionist, a uh, um, surrealist painter from Mexico. And, you know, they were, she created a majors only deck uh, when she was alive. She created a tarot deck. And so Rachel was very into that at the time. And she said that this deck seemed to be based uh, on a surrealist style. Uh, and she just loved it. And so I gifted it to her and, uh, yeah, the rest is history. So it always reminds me of her. But I really, really love this deck. It's one of my favorites ever. Um, so it's probably my top two. You know, I couldn't pick one. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that's it. I'm going to thank Bram for doing this uh, tag. And thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll talk soon. Love and peace. Bye-bye.